Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we're on the 12th episode of the Ender Stunner series, and in this episode we'll take a look on how to implement a fog to our game. And the fog will act as an enemy that will diminish the user's view. We'll also control how thick the fog is and have it move in or out of the scene. Disclaimer, we won't use the Unity Sparkle system, we just use a sprite, and I'll explain why later. Okay, so first we make the fog, then we make a way to actually activate it, and finally we add some extra features. This series is based on a game that I already made and published called Boot Venture. If you want to know how the finished game will look like, do check it out, it's on the Play Store for free for Android devices 9 plus. Alright, so let's start. The reason why I'm not using a particle system, particle systems are very heavy, especially if you're playing on a phone. So it really drains your battery if you use it, and it also overheats your phone. So I recommend just using a sprite and trying to use a workaround. So I'm gonna import the sprite I will be using, which is this sprite right here, and as you can see there's more than one. I've got these images from the asset store, from this package right here, which is free, also commercially. But I've tried to load and import this package again, and I couldn't find these sprites, or maybe they aren't really working right now. And we already had the image on my computer, thankfully, so you can just go and load them from Imgur, there's a link in the description. And the reason we have four sprites, it's not a really need for sprites, but this way we have a bit of variation and you can choose which one fits you the most. So let's go back to our scene and let's drag in one of the sprites and I'm gonna use Fog 2. Let me hide the canvas. Okay, and also made a bit of organization. I'm gonna move it at the top and we also want to scale it a lot. You can do what you want with it, you can copy these settings if you want, you can use your own pattern. You can also overlap different sprites, which is why I've brought more than one, to get a different and variable effect. Anyway, you can get creative with it. For now, we're just gonna stick to this one sprite. To get a thicker effect, I'm also gonna duplicate it, and this way it's actually gonna remove completely the vision. What we'll be then doing is just take these two sprites, and move them out or in of the view to activate the fog. And when we're in, we're just gonna decrease the alpha component to make it more or less thick. So let's also make a new empty object called fog parent to unite them. And I've also renamed the two game objects. And now let's make an animation for the fog parent to take in or out the fog. So let's go to the fog parent, let's add an animator, and let's make an animator controller. I'm gonna assign it, and let's make a new animation clip. And I'm gonna call this first clip fog in. For needs, we just need to change the position. And for the first keyframe, I'm gonna record and put it out of the view. Seems about right. Now let's select our animator, and in here let's make sure that Fogin doesn't have a loop time. And I'm also gonna slow down the speed to say 0.2. And by default I'm also gonna set the Fog to be out of the view. Okay, and if we hit play, the Fog is already activated, so the animation will start immediately. And as you can see it works, it moves in slowly, it's very menacing. Now let's make a way to activate this fog when we want to. So I'm gonna make a new script called fog, and I'm gonna attach it to the game manager. And in here let's make a reference to the game object fog parent. And let's make a public void function called activate fog that will just enable this game object. Now I want to call this function from another script, so let's make a singleton of this script fog. I want to call this function from the unlock enemies manager, so let's go grab that script. In this script, we add an enemy to the game every time we pass a certain amount of yards. Instead of doing that directly, let's instead increase a numeric value, so a difficulty level, and based on the value, we either add an enemy or we increase the weather difficulty, stuff like that. So let's make a new function, a private void called increase difficulty. And let's also make a new private int value called difficulty level. 
In our increased difficulty function, first thing we increase the difficulty level, then we make a switch statement to sift through what difficulty we are in right now. In our case, we have two things to add to our game. The first one is an octopus, so an add enemy function, and the second one is a fog, so the activate fog function. So let's make a case 1 and a case 2. In the case 1, we get the get mob manager add enemy function, just like that. And in the case 2 function, we call our fog manager or, or fog, and we say activate fog. And in here, we call increase difficulty. There we go. Let's go back to Unity and let's test this new function. But of course, first let's link our fog parent. And I'm also gonna reactivate the canvas and disable the fog. Let's try. And now at the start of the game, our enemies unlocked is zero. But as soon as we get to 20 yards, we unlock an extra enemy. So here's the octopus. And as soon as we get to 40 yards, our fog activates and it slowly goes in. Perfect. Now let's add some functionality to this fog. Let's make it so that the fog's thickness slowly fits out and in. So let's make two new animations for our fog. I'm gonna reactivate the fog parent, disable the canvas, and I'm gonna select the fog too. Let's make a new animator. Let's add the animator controller to our fog too. Be sure to add the new controller that we made. Now let's make a new animation clip and I'm gonna call it Fade Out. In here we want to change the color of the sprite renderer. I'm gonna go to the last keyframe, hit record and put the alpha to zero. Now I'm gonna select all keyframes, copy them and make a new clip. I'm gonna call it Fade In. And I'm just going to pass the keyframes and invert them. Perfect. Now let's open the animator window. And here I'm going to make a new empty state. And this is going to be our basic starting layer. This way when the fog comes in for the first time, nothing is going to happen. We're going to set up a timer in our code so that we switch between these two animations. And to do that, we're going to use parameters and triggers. If you don't know what parameters and triggers are, basically instead of playing each animation individually with dot play, we use something called set trigger. Set trigger is a function that fires a certain event in our animator, and based on where we are in the state machine, a certain animation is gonna play rather than another. To do that, let's go to parameters, and let's make a new parameter of type trigger, and I'm gonna name it switch fog. Then we simply need to make the transition from empty to fade out, from fade out to fade in, and from fade in to fade out. Then for each of these transition, we select it, and we set the condition from empty to switch fog. Finally, let's remove the loop time from the two animations that we made. And I'm also gonna slow down the speed a bit. Okay, and now let's go back to the code. In here, we need to make a timer. So I'm gonna make a private float timer, and a private float timer max. Then on awake, I'm gonna set the timer equal to the timer max. And timer doesn't really need to be serialized, but I'm just gonna keep it like that for debugging. Now let's make the update function. And in here, we simply detract from timer until we reach zero. And when that happens, we reset it to timer max. While we are here, let's also put a 5 second default value for timer max. And now when we timer reset, we get our animator and we set the trigger. So we also need to make an animator reference. Remember that we use the game object to call the fog parent and the animator to call the animator on the fog2. Now let's use this fog2. And in here we use the function dot set trigger. And as a value, it requires a string, and that has to be the name of a parameter that we have made. So, switch fog. Lastly, we don't want this script to run when the fog doesn't run. So we just check if fog parent is activated. And if it isn't, we just return from update. Perfect, now let's go to Unity. I'm gonna disable the fog parent. And let's also drag fog2 in the animator. 
and I'm also going to enable again the canvas and let's also increase the timer a bit because we also have to take into account the duration of the animation itself so by default I'm going to set it to 10. I'm also going to lower the yards to be able to increase difficulty to 5 so that we get there faster okay and at the start the animator doesn't run because the can magic is disabled when the fog comes it goes to empty and as soon as the timer reaches zero the trigger is going to set true and it's going to go to fade out the fog is getting a bit clearer and then when the timer reaches zero the trigger is going to set to true again and it's going to load the next animation right here fade in and the fog gets thicker so the effect isn't that obvious, it's not really in your face, and I prefer it this way. You can of course change it how you want. You can duplicate the fog again and make it thicker, or you can put the animator for fog on also the other one, so that the effect is a bit more uh, powerful. It's really up to choice, but for now I'll keep it like that. Another thing you can do to give it a bit of a spin is to add a bit of randomness. So let's go back to our script, and in here I want to make it so that when the timer is at, so in here, instead of always resetting to the same value, so instead of having the same animation run every 10 seconds period, I want it to be a bit random. So I'm gonna add a random range to the timer when I reset it to the maximum value. So let's make a new value called timer variance. And by default I'll set it to five. And then in here, when I set it to the max, I also add a random range. And I'll use the negative and positive value of timer variance. Let's go back to Unity. I'm going to make a final test. I've also disabled the collider so I don't have to worry about it. And as you can see, the timer now is running low. And instead of resetting to 10, it's gone to 14. And this way we get a bit of a variance, which it's not very obvious. It's just a bit of more natural feeling, which I think is really good to add. It doesn't affect gameplay too much, but it gives you a bit of a unique playthrough each time. Okay, and one last thing you can do if your fog effect is really big and can also land on your boat, one thing you want to do is select both your fog sprites and set the origin layer to be on top of the boat, so like 3. This way if your fog is really thick and it's gonna get all the way to your boat, it's gonna look like the fog is actually on top of the boat. If I set it to like 0, it's really contrast and doesn't look really good, but if I set it to 3, you can see that the boat also gets the fog effect, so be sure to make it on ordinary layer 3 or more. Okay, and that's it for this video, I hope you've learned something new. If you have any doubts about the code or any requests for a future topic, do tell me in the comments. If you've liked this episode and you want more content, please like and subscribe. If you want to know how the finished product will look like, do check out my game called Boat Venture. It's free on the Play Store for Android 9 Plus, link in the description. In the next episode we make a bonus effect, every 10 booties collected in a row will get an extra amount of money, and we also make a new item that decreases the amount of booties required in a row to activate the bonus, so be sure to stay tuned. Alright, and I'll see you in the next video.